And we are back. <laughs> Yo. Like Cairo Pratt. And we are, are almost whole again. Yeah. Welcome back, bro. <laughs> almost whole again. So shabby. <laughs> As Shout in, out Boomaye. You know what I'm saying? On his secret mission. Word. Thank you, y'all. It's, it's a pleasure to be back. Word. I can't talk about where I was at. Oh, they know already. Nah, yeah, they, they know. These boys trying to throw y'all off. <clears throat> Word. Okay. Word. But welcome back, but shut the fuck up. Who's Thanks, that man. over there? How was it to meet Channing Taylor? Hey, 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 hold up, my brother. See, this is what we I are. I just wanted this, to not this, shut the fuck up. See, so. <laughs> this is so what we're trying to going. avoid. Defiance. <laughs> Word. Hell yeah. If, was, if a nigga tell you something and you a, don't say nothing back, I'm what was the press for is. not shut the fuck up? You know what I'm saying? We haven't started yet. You're difficult. And who's that over there? <laughs> <laughs> That's a window. Ah, but me, <laughs> it's your boy Jormatic, aka Wave Chappelle, aka Wavy McGrady, Uh-oh. aka Black Galifianakis, Uh-oh. aka uh, I'm tired, aka we way too close. DJ, to the I'm old. Let's get. Uh. It went, it went, uh. yeah. And moving right along, you know it's your boy I see Black, aka Black Dynamite, aka Wave Bixby, aka Sometimes and Always. Swiss army nigga, Swiss army nigga. I miss it. Word. Glad you're back, bro. Word. I miss Swiss army nigga so much. Do you really? Yeah. Do you really miss the Swiss army nigga? It's low key my ringtone. Mm. Oh word. G. All right. <laughs> <laughs> miss y'all too. This is. <laughs> <laughs> and that's no knock against the homosexual community, but anyway. <laughs> guilty conscience. <laughs> But um, <laughs> this is Flock Zulu, a.k.a. Sir Black Stallion III, a.k.a. Pablo Escovich, a.k.a. No More, a.k.a. Stop the Violence. Bra, bra, bra. But yes, but what we're going to talk about today mm-hmm. is... Um, Something very close to home. Yes, because it's home. Oh, get it? Oh, God. Are, are you comfortable here? Where you are now? Are you comfortable? Where? It's I'm, not a trick question. Oh, are yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm back. Are, are you comfortable? I'm, it's not like I grabbed your collar. Are you comfortable? <laughs> Are you comfortable? Uh, Are you comfortable? I sure? want. I want my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, your lawyer's comfortable. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's crazy. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> wow. Okay. It, it was just a I'll, threatening phrase. To, you know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. How would you? It's a little. Your lawyer's comfortable. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know Frank? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> All right. Get out my face, Frank man. Weinstein? <laughs> <laughs> Get out my face before I sue your lawyers. Comfortable. What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, That's, speaking of comfort, what I was trying to get at. That's like the richest threat. That's like how they how you threaten people like in the hills. <laughs> You're right. Where, like, that, are you comfortable? That, that, that means your lawyer ain't shit. <laughs> oh, your lawyer be getting ate up out here. Don't think we don't know. <laughs> I need a shark, nigga. <laughs> like, oh, Frank, your lawyer? <sighs> I'm winning, Frank. Oh, you know what? Keep we're, him here. <laughs> Keep him here. Call Frank. <laughs> we're getting everything. All right. So that's, <laughs> that was an early TPSG. Wild as tangent. But to refocus, we're talking about places black people feel comfortable. Yes, and not just, you know, home and mm-hmm. grandma house and auntie house. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talk about, you know, in general. In general. Black safe havens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And why is this important or why does this exist? Well, first of all, it's important because the first rule in war is set a base camp. <laughs> away from your enemy. <laughs> you gotta go where there's at least dump down we stop. <laughs> I mean I mean, first off, it was just done to us. They're like black people stay here. But then now I feel well, we we, I I wanted to talk about this because I feel mm-hmm. I personally I feel more comfortable in areas where there either is mostly black people or have a good population of black people. Mm-hmm. But not all niggas. There's <laughs> like 90 percent niggas. Ten percent anybody else. But niggas can be anybody, my brother. No. <laughs> But no, no, I, I I agree with you because you know you're comfortable around your people, you're mm. comfortable around people who look like you and everything. Word. That's where I'm comfortable in Hialeah. <laughs> no, <word>. Hell no, <laughs> no, no but seriously, yeah, I, I I agree. You know, being around more black people, you know, <laughs> and also, you know, if shit goes down, mm. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> right? Somebody got you back. Yo, seriously, somebody. It's... I would never see a brother getting fucked up and just like, God, you know, not help. Especially if it's a cracker. When no, let, 
Let, <laughs> let's let's turn down the racial reminder. No, no you can never turn no, down. Give a damn. Fuck them crackers, cuz. You ever try to turn it down the sun? You can't. <laughs> Fuck them crackers. No, but it's um, there. It's perfect. Uh. Crack ass cracker. And so <laughs> when you're in a place, all right, this is how I feel about what you just said. Mm. When I'm in a place that's all that's just predominantly black in general. Mm. I don't feel like anybody would help me if I'm by myself and some shit's going on. Like, oh, I feel like people are just gonna walk by and be like, oh, keep it with that nigga shit. But <laughs> when you're in a place that black people aren't typically around, maybe mm-hmm. there's a decent population of black people, but you might find yourself in a city area, you know, at a function, mm-hmm. walk into your car, mm-hmm. somebody try to rob you, but there happens to be a black population in Portland, Oregon, mm. <laughs> some place. Right. Have you been to Portland? No. More like, let's call it more like Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, I, no, seriously. You're saying these cities like we got sponsorship from, no, from no, no, the... No. No. Visit beautiful nah, Richmond, nah. Virginia. Nah, forget Portland, Oregon. Visit R- beautiful R- Pensacola. R- forget Portland, Oregon. Richmond, Virginia is one of the black safe havens. And um, imagine yourself around there, right? Mm. And you get getting mugged or some shit like that. And some black people walk by. I feel, in my opinion, the chances of somebody helping you, that's your color, are greater in a place where not as many black people are. Because mm, they're more camaraderie. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, they know they oh, got to like, stick together. You know yeah. what? I'm, this is right. not exactly where I'm from. Mm-hmm. I'm away from home, and there's another brother that might be away from home. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, at least that's how I think. I don't know about you. Far y'all. away from your home, you's an alien. Right. <laughs> right. That's Jew. But, but what wow. I will say, even in those spaces where it's just like, it's hard black people, let them let them, let them crackers fuck with you. Yeah, that's what I meant. I didn't oh, mean that. There will be a crowd. Oh no, let them crackers fuck with you. Yeah, there will be a crowd. Leave that nigga alone. He ain't doing he shit. He ain't doing shit. Do I'm recording it already. <laughs> <laughs> the nigga, the nigga you was beating up, gonna be like, he wasn't doing shit. <laughs> yeah, Leave that nigga alone. Yeah. Hey man, we cool. That's my brother. <laughs> then some OG Literally. gonna come through while you fucking with these jits. Cock. And knock your ass out. <laughs> I've seen it happen. This is not like knock fairy out the, tale. Knock out the of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Pole. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta protect your own man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Against anybody. Mm-hmm. And that's um, back to your point about you know black safe havens. You know it. it not only. But what, just, what is that? I feel like we need to talk about. All right. Is first. Basically, anywhere you can go and feel. I guess like least the least threatened because mm. I, I believe you feel threatened mm. generally anywhere you go, Word. but like you know where you feel the least threatened, mm. you know for, from physical harm or whatever harm, and you feel comfortable and you feel like you can, like you can depend on them for things. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what a safe haven is to me. Word, word. You know what I'm saying? And there was a place like that in um, uh, Black Wall Street. They were yes. striving. Yes. Mm-hmm. They were striving. I mean, they, it was just running like a Wait. well-oiled machine. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened. Like, people say, oh, black, black people, crabs in the bucket, da 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 Every, oh, every uh, race or creed or whatever has crabs in the bucket. Okay. Mm-hmm. You okay. saying that about black people, but no, what I'm saying is there's evidence of us coming together mm-hmm. and shit working. Mm-hmm. People saying there's no evidence. Yeah. No. So I'm saying we should try to get well, what, back to what, that. But see, the narrative is being controlled by the people who... Not by us, obviously. Yeah, so yeah like, of course, of course. So, but the truth is, yeah, yes, black people have come together many times. What you're seeing I, in, I in most do. of our mm-hmm. lower income communities or whatever you want to call it is just the result of constant, constant beat down. Like, yeah. just mm-hmm. like, you know, you come up and then you get fucked again. Or yeah. So, for those of y'all who don't know about Black Wall Street in general, you should look it up. However... Um, it was literally Black Wall Street. It was a thriving community mm-hmm. of black individuals who were all uh, wealthy, if you will, down to the um, milk. Man edu- was black. Yeah, they were edu- <laughs> they were they were all educated. They 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 had their own ecosystem, their economy, and um, them them crackers came through and literally burnt it down. Yeah, I, I don't they, I don't think everyone died, obviously, but like, no, no, burnt, no. It, it burnt, was it was a significant they, amount of death, they, but they burnt, destroyed everything. They, Burnt the shit down and is not taught in the history books. And this was in the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Nah, it, I, so it, was it was in Oklahoma, right? I believe it was either Oklahoma, Texas, or Oklahoma. I think it's Oklahoma. But I could be wrong. I but know but it yeah. was in the mid south. <laughs> the um, the only way we can achieve something like a black safe haven or 
you know, whatever. We just have to believe that we can work together because mm. that's a big issue with a lot of black people. Mm. They say shit like, oh, don't trust niggas. anybody. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't trust niggas. This or that, da da da. Nigga, your mama, nigga, your daddy, your nigga, your mm. brother, sister, cousin, auntie, uncle, grandma, right. grandpa. But then you, you, you get put in. <laughs> and you don't trust them. Right. <laughs> and that what? distrust from, comes from like the just, just the one, the narrative mm-hmm. that's been pushed upon us, and two, just being in situations where, like. Purposely, you're you're the most hungry. You're the most mm-hmm. yeah. You know, so it's like off rip too. Off rip. So off it's rip. like Some people in those start situa- life like that. Where, like, in, those, in that in that situation, it's hard to be because people people always have this thing about like you know being nice, being generous, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like it's it's easy to be generous when you got it. Word. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's very easy. It's very easy. You well, actually need when for you, you and everybody for and very everybody you find. Is generous when they have it. Uh-huh. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's like, but that can turn into a vicious cycle. But that's yeah. another discussion. Yeah, like have have be put in a situation where you know what I'm saying. If you if you give, you might not have tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Let's see how generous you are. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And you 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 have these people who are put in that situation more often. And he's like, oh well, mm-hmm. you're mean or whatever. Like, nah, you they no. Like I've had turmoil my entire life. Like mm-hmm. this scowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, from struggle. You know what I'm I don't know you enough to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just, like, I came from shit. You know what I'm saying? Word, like, word. <laughs> but, um, back to the point. The only way to achieve that is to work together. But you, you did. You made you made a good point though, mm. because some people are like that because of what they went through, and mm-hmm. it's either they went through it or they've they're, they're still going through it. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of like a lot of these impoverished places, like there's people that's like 60, 70 years old that's been there mm-hmm. their entire life. Yeah, literally, they haven't gone past downtown, nigga. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm real. saying? But. It seems like every year they live, it just gets worse. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The crime goes up or the quality of the housing goes down. You know, it's just something happening all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. And people don't understand that. Mm-hmm. Like, to quote Dave Chappelle again, if you told a white person what it is to be black in America, would they believe you? Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, they, they would don't. would never believe this shit. If you tell a white person what? What it is to be black in America. What it is to be black in America? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. They don't. That's they why. Don't. That's why all lives they matter really. exist. Well, the reason. That's exactly. why. Yeah, exactly. That's and why blue lives matter exactly. exist. Exactly. Because exactly. they don't. They don't want to believe. Yeah, they don't. They rather deflect. Yeah. And semantics. Yeah. <laughs> Where? Really semantic. Or that's they least, or they just don't want to acknowledge because mm-hmm. they don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's probably the reason. It doesn't yeah, affect yeah, them. yeah, whatever. Or, I've said this like 80 podcasts. Mm-hmm. But it, it doesn't, doesn't affect them. Oh, it Until does. it does, or, they're like, okay, we got to no, handle it, this. It, you know it, does a, it does affect oh. them. Any situation where you find us in a position of greater power than we were before affects them. It affects their economic system because it was built upon us being on the bottom. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I understand. So, but when you're at the bottom, they don't give a fuck about you. You only give a fuck when you rise up. Mm. That's oh, what yeah, I'm saying. Like you're supposed to give a fuck, period. Well, <laughs> that's all the time. But that's not the case with humanity. To to to, to get to kind of get you know ease on back into the to, to the, the point to the to the main um, point. There are there are pockets, um, you know, of the United States, with you know, uh, with great black populations that you know, in general, make you know, they good thrive. Money. They're thriving. Mm-hmm. You know, Atlanta is one of these. Places DC, mm-hmm. Chocolate City, um, Miami uh, is one. Yeah, Miami. Coincidentally Fun. enough, we, yeah. we're I mean, looking I'll at the list. We're looking at um list, and basically this was a list of like how well black people were doing econo- like um finance- economically. Economically, yeah. thank you. Um, <laughs> Economically, right. Eco- Eco- <laughs> Ana- anonymity. Economically, you know hey, what's his word? As they say in the Greek. <laughs> <laughs> As they say. <laughs> <laughs> this derives from the Greek word, word. anonymitis. Word. <laughs> but funny enough, like all of them were pretty much in the South, like Virginia, mm-hmm. North Carolina. I think know. up north never been for it's too cold. Fuck y'all. <laughs> nah, nah fuck with you. Word. I love up north people. <laughs> But I just but not found the cold. Out, fuck y'all. <laughs> I just found out funny because you you would think that like you know even on the west coast and the yeah. north coast that's where kind of like uh, that's where the economic um, hubs are pretty much. Yeah, you think you'd have black communities there like you know? But for who? It, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, like, a lot of so that, or are they for like? And of mm-hmm. course, black people are 
more southern and you know given there's a lot more there's a lot of other cultures out west if mm. you will you know what i mean like yeah there's a lot of black people mm. and um however there's a lot of Asians. other cultures that we you don't even see in great populations mm. uh, or in great sizes in um Asians. in in my or in florida there's a lot of for Asians example. on the west coast well mm. not even just Asians cuz we have a lot of Asians here but i, would I say mean a lot. even mm-hmm. you don't have like, a chinatown we don't, don't have enough Asians. <laughs> It's this a nigga, this nigga gonna keep talking over <laughs> Every time. I'm gonna get the high bitches and get angry. No, okay. Oh, God. No. Somebody <laughs> just took their headphones off. <laughs> Probably. No, but um, there's a lot of, like, Armenians, mm. right? Or yeah. there's a lot of uh, Ethiopians in California. Mm. Um, so, And I'm talking about these specific areas, you know, mm. from around the world. So around here, down south, we still have obviously the largest population because this is mostly where we were brought here Mm -hmm. so you know Mm -hmm. some people made it out up north Mm -hmm. and then as you know history went on time went on uh and we got more freedom more people started to move out but some people just stayed so you're saying um it's it's mostly because there are more pockets of black people in the south in my opinion now this is not i mean i mean that that makes sense because it's like where we are is where we're just gonna like all right we're here yeah yeah and that's that's more of a thought Mm. driven theory rather than an actual research and a fact driven theory yeah but 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 then that thought i mean i mean the evidence is there to where like um our thriving communities are in the south so it makes sense and it it mm-hmm. juxtaposes the whole idea that we don't sit together mm-hmm. and we don't yeah. you know build mm-hmm. each other up. <laughs> yes. Cause I'm gonna look at this from an anthropological approach, brother. Mm-hmm. A what? Cause when you think of <laughs> when you think about it, anthropology, nigga, anthropologists, niggas that just look at people. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like the pe- like professional people watching. Yeah. <laughs> Which is actually some yo, them niggas know a lot, man. They could probably size you up and down just like a psychologist. Yeah. Would, do you know humans of New York? Would. I do not. Um, it's an Instagram page where uh, this guy walks around, and takes random pictures of people, and uh-huh. he tells them like a crazy story about themselves. And oh, like, he's, like he helped a lot. Of, yeah, he interviews, he interviews them. them yeah. And he like he either he either has a video or has a quote written of like what they say. What's it yeah. called? Humans, humans of, of New York. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, like, I'm adding that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm gonna cool. I'm I'm go look that up. But yeah, so basically what I was trying to say before was that um, if when I look at it in terms of just like a anthropological perspective, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you you think about people, cultures, societies, right? Mm-hmm. And you know you have families, which is like a smaller level. I don't remember the actual terms, but like your family is immediate, and then you go to the community, mm-hmm. and that's another part. So. Think of it as like a circle, right? And the dot in the middle of the circle is family, and then you go around the circle. You know, you draw a circle around that dot. Yeah, it's I community you around it. Yeah, and then it gets larger and larger. And but the fact that like if everyone or most black people were brought to this these areas in the south, well, naturally the people who stayed, as time went on and societies progressed, your your seeds who are like now less afraid to go out and be themselves and do things, they are actually the families, the people that were already here who are now not afraid to go out and, you know, venture into, like, have the confidence in themselves to be business people and uh, 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 drive the economy in the area. So I guess I'm just thinking about it from that perspective. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like, it's just the effect of time and us being there already. Oh, yeah. 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 True. It's, uh, yeah, it's like another, it was inevitable. Mm-hmm. Like, so far. And another... Um, Another thing that I didn't even consider till to, to we started talking um, as a Black Safe Haven is um, HBCUs. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know. Yes, and, good, good. Yeah, good point. Good and point. Um, I was, like, I was even telling, um, saying this to one of y'all, both of y'all, I don't know, whoever, but, like, I historic feel like. Black. Yeah, hi- uh, historic uh, black mm-hmm. colleges mm-hmm. and universities. But um, <laughs> I would say, like, if I had to do it over again, I would go to an HBCU. Like, oh, same. Yeah, same. Yeah, if I yeah if I even go for more like you know higher degrees, I I definitely check out <laughs> higher degrees, more yeah. higher degrees. Say what you picky. More higher degrees. You know what <laughs> quite, I'm quite, quite. Anyway, but yeah, that's a very good one, and that's where you um if you do go through the whole high school and four years of college, da da. That's mm. where you meet a lot of your closest friends, mm. a lot of people you 
connect with and make business with and mm. you know build futures with and everything you know what i'm saying so yeah well, that's college a, is a networking haven oh yeah networking people you stay haven. connected with become your business yeah and partners a big chunk of people i know now because of college and the, yeah and the crazy thing about hbc you went to college or the, uh, the other thing about HBCU is you job core considering <laughs> 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 I, took I went to juvie. <laughs> <laughs> I take cup class. Oh, anyway. <laughs> I took night classes at NMB. <laughs> and it was a college professor. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, my bad. Go ahead, Go ahead, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all <are loose. laughs> But um, I couldn't uh, grass last week. No. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. But like, a lot of a lot of people that like live in communities where. Like they're one of the few black families or mm. whatever. Like, mm. A lot of those type of people go to HBCUs and like their life is like, they're like yo, yo change. yeah, change changes for real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just being around and it's like I feel like that's important. Yeah, because I feel like, and 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 people think it's like oh we're, you know we're racializing things and. No, and, what, and, and, the, and then the, the reality of the situation is that that's the reality that we're born into. We're born into a racialized reality. Thank you. And people who who aren't, like, you know, W sometimes don't understand this because even a lot of them, they're, you know, they want to be progressive. They want to have a future where race, you know, doesn't play a big factor. And, we all do. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, a lot of them, I feel like that's their intention when they say, like, you know, stop, you know, focusing on race. You guys should just stop focusing. But, like, they don't realize the focus is because their lives aren't affected by their race at all and at, our lives are kind of like molded by our race and they, they they can't understand that they can't understand they it. can't and you they know, never will you know what yeah. i'm saying so it's like when you are around people because we call it the black experience mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying when you're around the people that shame it's it's like you could take black people from all over the country and bring them together, and the, the the core thing that they'll have in common is that black experience. Mm-hmm. And p- you can't have that, and yeah. you can't escape that. It's like it's something that was created by, yeah. like you. The, you're so, literally there's nothing you know to do saying? about it. Like yeah, so it's like that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah you were born into that, and them them W's. They a lot of them, most all, <laughs> <laughs> most, a whole nah, mo- <laughs> most most don't understand. There are a few. Um, that don't understand and are willing to listen and try mm-hmm. to understand. And then there's a few that are even compassionate enough to actually get involved. Mm-hmm. But aside from that, like, how can you understand, though? Yeah. Like, you're, it's a generational thing. It's something that is the result of effects that are longer than your lifespan. Boom. So it's like, how do you understand that? Like, you're just a fucking human that lives a certain, you know, less than 100 years most of the time. Mm-hmm. And you don't, you're not here long enough to understand the effects of what happened over hundreds or thousands of years of treatment to mm-hmm. a particular set of people. Set of people, exactly. A mm-hmm. particular set. People who look a certain way. Um, so, yeah, when you, when you grow up without having to have anxiety for certain things ever... Ever. You know what I mean? Or having to worry about things that, you know, not having to look behind you, your back when you're walking down the sidewalk yeah. or some shit like that. Like, white people don't have to worry about, you know, the average white population, yeah. you know, doesn't have to worry about that because they'll come from a place where they, you know, their parents generally take care of them, you know. You, mm-hmm. So it's it's just a deep, deep rooted situation. Um, so that's why it feels nice to have these certain black safe havens where there's people who can come together who have these common backgrounds and uh, and then together be successful and strive and thrive and be successful in that too. No, you can strive too. You can strive. You can thrive. You can thrive, thrive, and survive. Word. Good night, people. Word. <laughs> and with that. With that. Yeah, man. But it w- that was a great discussion and I implore you people to <laughs> <laughs> this guy, <laughs> this guy. This no, old letter episode dragon. Episode dragon ass nigga. No, no, no. I was just, I was just wrapping it up. Is that how you finish the show? I was just wrapping it up. Is that how you finish the show? All right. <laughs> See you later. No. Wrap it up. God damn it. Cut. I'm sick of this shit. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I implore you to you know, just 
<laughs> See, watch him. Watch, watch him. Watch him prolong this moment. No, I'm not prolong. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm not say prolong. What, say what I'm just saying, player. you know, believe in your people, man. Like, say th- what I, you I just feel like that's say. the biggest thing. You just don't believe in each other as black people. Like, we're all in one, so we got to stick together and all that. So it sounds like a 90s uh, instructional video. Word. This nigga said, I'm a rapper that was some deep shit. Word. Stick together no. and all that. <laughs> I never said it was going to be deep. <laughs> no, I, I actually thought it was going to be deep. Let me rephrase that. Pause. Oh. Um, wow. Uh, put up your expectations. And with that, and with absolutely that, nothing else. <laughs> what a way to end the show. What a way. And this has been <laughs> Flock Azulu, a.k.a. Sir Blackstein III, a.k.a. Pablo Escovich, a.k.a. No More, a.k.a. Stop the Violence. Brap, brap. And you know it's your boy, I seen Black Dynamite just put names together <laughs> all the time. Mm. But first and foremost, and always, remember, each and every one of you, just like me, if you try to be and think about it and believe in yourself and be confident, you can also be, not just in these black safe havens, but everywhere you are, a Swiss army nigga. Hey. Swiss army nigga. Swiss army nigga. Right. <laughs> That was amazing. And <laughs> I can't really follow that up. I'm dramatic. <laughs> AKA. Good say, night. <laughs> AKA. Say what you need to say. <laughs> say what AKA. you need to say. We're going to harmonize on that. <laughs> say what you need to say. <laughs> AKA. I'm going to add this to the list of fake, y'all. <laughs> good night. Peace. Peace. I said good night. <laughs> <laughs>